Hello everybody and welcome back to the Business Growth Club. This is your weekly edition from us and in this week's edition we continue our email marketing journey and we look at specifically how you send your first email to the list. So if we recap where we've been so far in this series, we've had a look at why you'd want to do email marketing and the power of email marketing and the theory that underpins the practice of email marketing. And we know how powerful emails are. Uh, and we've also looked in a couple of videos at some of the best strategies for growing your email list. So up until this point, we're ready to start sending our first email. So today we'll look at what makes the perfect email. We'll have a look at a practical real world example. And I'll also give you a template that any business can use where you can literally fill in the blanks to make your own first email. So as I said, we're going to give you a template and we're also going to give you a real world example. Now throughout this series, we've been looking at Business Growth Club member, AB Decorators in County Durham, and we've been using them as a case study, if you will. Because very often members say to me, it's great when you write kind of generic copy, if you will. Um, but if we can see how it works for a general um, everyday business, then we can see how it applies to our business. So what we're going to look at is the first email we've written for them. So far we've used how um, the system would work for them, the offers they could use, the different ways they could attract people to their list. So now we're going to look at the first email we will send to this list. Now the important some things to remember about the email we're about to see is it's the first email to the list, not the last, and that's quite important. Email marketing doesn't really get a hit in the same way as direct mail doesn't really get a hit the first time you send it. It is a long-term campaign. Sometimes you get responses straight away, but generally it's an introductory email and then you keep going. So in the next video, we'll look at ongoing focused follow-up and how you continue the process. So this is just day number one, so bear that in mind. The objective, therefore, is to make them an offer. We always run our uh, marketing based on offers, but also we want to establish brand awareness, our credibility and trust. So remembering that the responses are likely to come later, we want to introduce our brand. We want to have a credible experience with them. They want to know that we are credible and they can do business with us and build up that trust, become a trusted advisor to them, a trusted contact. And all of these together, the combination of these factors, will give you an email that will work a lot more effectively than just sending somebody a HTML graphical email that doesn't do very much, it doesn't make an offer, it doesn't really state why to use you, and it, 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 yeah, they're of a limited effectiveness. Okay, so let's have a look at this email then. As we've said, it's an initial email, it's email number one to the list. The target market is hotels, so we've gained people on the list who are hotels. You may remember me mentioning that for AB Decorators, hotels is a good contact, for obvious reasons, they're big, they have open spaces, lots of rooms, you know, there's, a, there's something to get your teeth into. Um, we're strictly sending the email to a real named person only, and that's very important. Never send your emails, dear sir, or dear Radisson Hotel. You must know the name of the person you're emailing. Otherwise, not only is it more likely to go into the spam filter, also it just won't have any effectiveness. People don't read generic ones, so make sure it's to a named person. And the purpose is to introduce our services, obviously, and also to make an initial offer. As I say, we're not necessarily expecting responses straight away, but we start to make an offer from day one, so we set our stall out. Now, you know there's numerous ways for you to build your email list, and I've just decided on this one we're going to imagine that you telephoned local hotels, said that you wanted to send them some offers, took the email address of the person who's most likely to deal with that and emailed them. However, you could have done it via a website promotion, via offline advertising, any other of the media that we've talked about. So essentially, the email here refers to when we spoke on the telephone last. However, that could be when you joined our list or when you responded to our advert. So there's different ways you can do it, but just for this one, we're imagining that we did telephone promotion. But for any of the other leading strategies, you would just reference those. So that's just something to bear in mind. So why don't we pop over to Word now and we'll have a look at this template, if you will, this, this original email for AB Decorators. Below this video, you will see there's two links to this. You can download this in um, a dot, um, dot .word document or a dot .wordx document, depending on which version of Word you're using, and you can just have a read over it. Obviously, I'm going to show it you on the screen now, but if you open it on your computer and read over it, you'll probably start to see what I'm saying more. And I also don't intend to read every word to you because that would be a bit boring. I'm just going to show you the general themes. 
Now you notice this is a text only email as well. On your email software you can use text only emails um, and next week I'll show you some examples of what they look like. But this is designed not to be a graphical email because they're unlikely to work, they reach spam filters, all of the reasons I mentioned in the first uh, video. So this is a text only, uh, text only email. So we'll pop over to Word now and have a look at it and see what this is all about. Okay, so here is the email for AB Decorators. As I've said, if you actually download this and have a look at this at the same time, you'll probably get a lot more value out of this. Uh, but I'm just going to talk over some of the key themes. First of all, what's most important in email marketing is the subject line. That's the line where if an email comes in from Bob Smith, it will say email from Bob Smith and then it will say something. So it could be following our meeting yesterday or how are you or the information as promised, the subject line that you type into your email. This is as crucial in an email as the headline is in direct mail. It's absolutely crucial. So the subject line we've had for this is Olympic offer exclusively for Northeast hotels. Do you see how this is a niche campaign to hotels? So we've said an Olympic offer, we're making an offer exclusively for Northeast hotels. And I believe that would get a reasonable number of opens. Next, we go hello first name. That's pretty obvious. On your email software, you'll see how you can merge in their first name. And it just referenced, when we spoke on the phone earlier today, I promised I'd send you the details of our Olympic offer exclusively for hotels. So here it is, and then make a very bold offer. The one I've gone for here is just buy one, get one free, on all rooms decorated, only available on orders placed during the Olympics. That's just me guessing in an offer. You know, you can come up with your own offers. But there's a couple of things to remember. Number one, we've made a bold, big offer, a big statement. Secondly, it's very compelling. Thirdly, it's time limited. Now, you'll notice I've made that larger, and I've made it in a kind of bluish colour. So the font is 50% um, larger than the other font, and it's in a nice dark blue. The reasons for this is so it's noticeable. You can make stuff bold in your regular text. Just above that, exclusively for hotels is in bold, but it's nowhere near as distinctive as this big offer. Now, some people will tell you to use red in email marketing. Other people will tell you to highlight it um, in yellow. I don't believe that's particularly the way to go because I found that that's not so effective on a computer screen. It's quite garish and difficult to read. I've had best success using big dark bold or dark green or something like this. So you can go down the red route if you want to, but sometimes it can just be garish and bold. It's almost um, too over the top. Big red writing is, um, it's almost I'm making you an offer and it's too telegraphed. Whereas this is subtle, but it's still distinctive. So, um, so then we'll make the offer. Then we go down and we just say, uh, I'm sure you agree it's quite an incredible offer. In fact, you might wonder, why am I making you this offer? And this is the reasons why I often talk about, where we explain why we've given somebody an offer. And here I just explain, there's a reason why I called you. You weren't just a number on a list. You know, hotels are our ideal customers. And that's because, and we state the USP of the business. So we say, uh, we want to explain how much of a difference our service will make to the look, feel and appearance of your hotel. Because that's the raison d'etre of the business. That's the, the USP, the core service we offer. Then we say, why should you give us a try? What's the difference? And this is where your email marketing will work over everybody else's email marketing if you follow this certain format. First of all, in bold, you state the feature. And if you want to state the feature, such as we've got a keen eye for detail, in a snappy headline. So I could have said here on the first one that we pay great attention to detail. But actually I've been a bit more snappy, a bit more interesting, and we've said we've got a keen eye for detail. That's the feature. And then we spell out the benefit of the feature. State the feature, then the benefit. Below that, you could have put we try hard. But actually we've been a bit more snappy again. We go the extra mile. You could say that you commit it, but actually we'll say we're on your side. You could say we're flexible, but actually said we'll fit in around you. So do you see how you're using a bit more snappy, it's a bit more interesting, it's a bit more kind of clever copy, if you will. But they're the features, we then state the benefits. And we've stated a few more, we'll keep it clean, we'll stick to the rules. So this one, we'll stick to the rules, is a good example. You could say we're fully insured and all staff are fully trained. But actually have a read of, over this on your template and you'll see how we've written this in just such a more interesting fashion. And that's what you've got to do. Say you're fully insured and fully trained, boring. Say something like, we'll stick to the rules. In this day and age, we both know how important regulations such as health and safety and insurances are. 
for your peace of mind, we'll ensure all such regulations are adhered to. So do you see how it's just, it's just a more interesting way of stating it? We'll also state we've got the experience, um, and then we say this bit, which is the, almost the most important part other than the offer, is the social proof. Once you state your features and benefits, always then say, but you don't have to take our word for it. Here's what some of our customers said about recent work, and then copy a nice snippet from a couple of recent testimonials. This social proof is very, very important. And then after social proof, you always say something like this. They can't all be wrong. So first name, claim your state offer now. Remember, it's only an offer during the Olympic Games, so it ends on the 12th of August. Call to action, hit reply, give us a call. Um, something about this so first name as well, you'll notice I've put first name in yellow. That's not because I believe you should highlight it in yellow. That's just to let you know that if you use a template like this, you've, you've got to change the first name. There's something you can very easily do, and I tell you from painful personal experience, where you'll write it in Word and you'll highlight, uh, sorry, you'll just write first name. And then you'll send an email going, dear first name. If it's in yellow, when you add it to your email software, you can do the mail merge and you can replace that for the insert first name. So just look out for that one. You can you can easily be caught out. Then it says, um, and this is opening the door for the future. I look forward to talking to you soon and discussing how we can, and again, you state your core USP. We can deliver the look, feel and appearance that you want and deserve for your hotel. Thanks, first name. Then you sign it off from the person, and then this is quite important, have a PS line. You can put PS here, or you can just put um, a general line. You don't need to put PS in an email like you do in a letter. Um, I sometimes do, I sometimes don't. It doesn't make any difference. But here is when you try and get them onto your website, which is quite important. So here I've just put, you can find out more about our services that we offer, see pictures of jobs we've completed, and see some references, some more references even, from customers at our website, your URL. So that is a basic email, a basic email that any business can use. You'll probably notice from this email that it's very benefit driven, it's very focused, it's actually quite interesting to read, it's quite punchy. And this is for a, quite a commoditized business, sort of painting and decorating. You might imagine, lots of people out there tell me, their businesses are quite commoditized and they're quite like other businesses. Actually, if you read this email, it's probably different to what other people are sending and we've really spelt out the benefits of working with you. And we've given you a different, um, a different way of um, of promoting your business, if you will. It's also all about the customer. It's not about you. You say this is what we do for you, Mr. Customer. Not this is what we're all about. We've got all this experience, and we make sure we do X, Y, Z. It's actually written for the customer. So that's an email that anybody can use. But I'm going to go one step further than that, and I'm actually going to give you now a template that you can download, again below this video you can download this, and this isn't a copy of the AB Decorators one, the one you're about to see is one where you can literally fill in the blanks. I've just given you a, a template email any business can use, you just need to write in your own details. So let's have a look at this one, again you can open it on your computer and have a look at it whilst I talk over on this video, or print it out and have a look over it. But now let's have a look at template you can use. Okay, so here we are, and basically anything in yellow, you just change and you literally fill in the blanks for your business. Anything highlighted in blue, that's something you need to do in your email software. So number one, subject line. Try to keep this under 50 characters. The reason for that is in most email um, readers, most email browsers, you can only see 50 characters. The headline we saw for the AB Decorators version was 47 characters. Try if you can to keep it below 50 characters. Or if you want to write more, almost write your 50 characters, then put in brackets a little bit extra. So, um, you know, try and focus it into that. So write your subject line, that's very important. Spend as much time on the subject line as everything else. And then, you just need to fill in the blanks. So the first blank you need to fill in is state your offer. And if it's a niche or exclusive offer, give details. So state the offer, you know, I'm giving you our Olympic special, um, Christmas special, summertime special, whatever. And then say, exclusively available to local dentists only, or whoever your target market are. Then the next one is to boldly state your offer, including a deadline if possible. Remember, offers work much better if they've got a deadline. Then the next bit we have to fill in, and you'll notice on this, there's only little bits you have to fill in. The rest of this will work fine. And if you go through this yourself and you fill in the blanks, you'll find that the rest of it 
um, it you know works brilliantly for your business. So, for instance, say you're just calling dentists because it's an offer just for dentists. You've only got little bits here to fill in. The rest works. Why did I contact you? It's simple. There's a reason why I called you. Dentists are our ideal customer. Vets are our ideal customer. Business coaches are our ideal customer. Do you see how of all these um, sentences, there's only a tiny bit you need to change? Then you say, we like to say how we're different to every other state industry profession, so whatever industry you're in. Then later on, you state your USP or positioning, your core benefit, the, f the key feature of working with your business. So if you help people to build a better business, write that. If you help people to have IT services that work, state that. If you help people to do whatever you do, state the benefit. Don't state what you do in terms of we'll fix your IT. Say, we'll give you IT that runs like clockwork 24 hours a day, so you have the peace of mind of knowing that your computers will never, ever go down. That's much better than saying we fix your IT. So when I say your USP or your position, your core benefit, the outcome of working with you, that's what I mean, the, the benefit-driven um, something about your business. Then we'll just go down a little bit further, and here I've just put um, this, this formula. It's a very simple formula. I mentioned it in the other one. State the feature. Be short and snappy. Come up with a, a punchy headline, if you will. So instead of saying your computers will never go down, you could say you're live 24 hours a day or you're live 365. It's a little bit more interesting than saying you'll never go down. And then state the benefit of that. Like I've said, you know, you'll never, your computers will never go down, so you've got peace of mind, all the rest of it. So if you were an IT company, that's how you'd make it snappy. So you state the feature, be short and snappy, then state the benefit. This should be emotional and it should be outcome driven. What do you get after the services have been delivered? So the benefit basically tells people passionately, boldly, what the result of a feature provided is. And you can do that for one, um, two, three, I mean, I think I've probably put five or six different features. Um, there's no golden number here. Now, I've actually done email marketing where we've done 101 features. I don't for one second imagine people read them all, but we were trying to be clever in saying there's 101 reasons to do business with us. That's a more advanced strategy, but it worked brilliantly. As I say, nobody will have read all of them, but it was a, a bit of a positioning statement, if you will. Um, so you can see how that sort of stuff works. But if you're just getting started in your initial email, I believe five is about right. But if you believe there's eight great reasons for working with you, put eight. If you believe there's ten, do the top ten. So you don't feel limited here because I've put five. I'd see five as being the bare minimum. Every business should have five key features and the benefit that's associated with it. But don't be bound by five. Just, just do whatever you want. Um, but make sure you've got at least five to, to get it up to speed. Basically, if you're not quite sure how to do this now, get a piece of paper and just write down all the reasons for working with you. When you're in a sales meeting with somebody, that's all of the some things you say to convince them to come on board. So do the features and then state the outcome of working with you. And then you do, as I've said, the don't just take our word for it. Here's what some of our customers have said about our recent work. This is so, so powerful. Make sure you do this. Anybody can say you're brilliant. If you were the IT company example, anybody can say you'll be live 365. However, if you've got a testimonial, from one, two or three people, you don't have to be limited to three again, you could use um, as many as you want, maybe um, maybe have video testimonial links as well, um, but I think three is a bare minimum. But if you were the IT company and somebody said, our computers have never ever gone down since we've used John Smith Computers Limited, they're absolutely brilliant, it's great value for money and I love working with them, I recommend them heartily to other businesses, and a couple of other people say that. Well, that's for social proof, isn't it? You're more likely to believe that they're live 365 if that's what they say. So um, so that's how I'd use it. Again, general rules of testimonials is state the name, uh, their company or status. So company, if it's a business, a manager, um, you know, managing director at John Smith Limited uh, or homeowner if it's a, a domestic service. And then their location works quite well. Um, that just makes them human. Um, lots of people will tell you to use pictures um, of the testimonials. It's not the best advice I've ever heard. It, it, I'm, I'm yet to see that work particularly, but you can if you want. In an email, the, the picture of a person's probably going to disappear. What works much better is a video testimonial. So you could take maybe a sentence and then say, John Smith, Managing Director of John Smith Limited, County Durham, then put in brackets, see the video in full here. 
and that will work much much better than putting pictures or, or other kind of corny ways of doing it uh, you know a video of them talking passionately about your business will work much much better I've talked about testimonials time and time again you can see how powerful they are so I won't labor that one too much then just they can't all be wrong claim your state the offer then state the deadline and then to end with state your usp again always end on this you know I, I want to talk to you in the future so i can discuss the sort of difference we can make by delivering our um you know live 365 it services so you have the peace of mind of your computers never ever going down ever again you know state that not just so we can deliver our it services I receive so many emails that say stuff like, I'll call you soon um, so I can discuss um, how we can help you or something like that. And it's just rubbish. It's, oh, so how we can help you. Wow, that's that's exciting. That's not got me interested in your services. Whereas saying something like that will get people much more interested. Then, thanks first name. Always end emails on this. It's a good strategy. Thanks Bob Smith or the person you're talking to. Then state your name and position. And then you'll notice something about uh, this template. There's not very much work for you to do. And actually, the PS line about your website will work for every single business. All you've got to do is write your URL. So you can find out more about the services we offer see examples of past projects and read more references from satisfied customers on our website at so do you see all of that works for every business I don't care what business you're in in the world your website should have all of those features and that that sentence works so you then just you know do www.yourwebsite.com so that's a template which you'll see anybody could use this just fill in the blanks of course don't feel that you have to use all of my wording here if you are happy with um, how this works and, uh, and, and, and you're comfortable with the wording or you're not so good at writing wording, you can. But if you don't, just change it. You know, I'm, I'm not saying this is the world's best email. Um, I'm saying it's a good template that anybody can use. This kind of template, I've had success with this using it. This is pretty much the format that I use myself. But as I say, if you're comfortable and you like changing the wording, change it around. But if you're not, maybe you're not quite sure how to find the words. Lots of people say they'd like to do emails, but they can't find the words. Use this template. So really what I'm saying is this template will work, but use it as much or as little as you want. Another something is make sure in the bit um, towards the end here, when it says simply hit reply to the email um, now or call, um, you don't leave my phone number. That phone number is, is um, our Durham office phone number. Don't get people to call the Durham office. Obviously, you want them to call your own office. Just keep out for that because people have used templates of mine before and um, they, you know they can make silly mistakes by still signing it off by me or something. So just you know, have a look at that. As always, if you use this template for your own business and you want me to have a look over it, I'm more than happy to. Just email us at the normal address with the email and I'll read over it and I'll give you, um, if I need to, some pointers um, to how you can improve it. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm sure if you use this template, it will give you probably everything you want. So now let's jump over to the main presentation to do a quick summary. Okay, so we've now seen a real life email how we can use an email for a real life everyday business as I've said not the easiest of businesses to promote but I think if you look at that you'll see how I've turned what you could construe as a, an everyday business into a very interesting business and we've given people a great reason to reply so you can use that template which will work you can save it onto your computer fill in the blanks upload it to your email software and send now I said in the first video on the email marketing series how you can use stuff like Constant Contact, Aweber, um, MailChimp to use your email, send your emails, the email software. I said I don't want to do any videos on that um, particularly because we've done them in the past but actually all of those providers have updated their own system, their own support system and they've got great video tutorials now. However, if you're struggling and you want a bit of help, please, as always, drop me a line and I'll, I'll, I'll give you a pointer in the right direction and, and solve whatever problem you've got. But you'll probably find if you go to Constant Contact or MailChimp or whatever, um, you, you, it's really easy to use. If you can use a computer, uh, normal email software, you can use that. So if you're struggling, let me know, but I, I, I think you should all be fine. Now, finally, I mentioned in the AB Decorators an Olympic offer. We said um, we're running this offer only in the Olympics. Now, in the In Focus article, in the email, the email that we send you with the link to this video also has the written article every week. In this week's In Focus article, we actually had a look at using Olympic offers. And I believe you should all read over that document and consider using Olympic offers for your business. They work really well. All seasonal offers work well, and I'm always talking to you about seasonal offers because they're a great excuse to go to your customers. 
Now, an Olympics offer works better than most other seasonal offers for a couple of reasons. Say it's for Football World Cup. Now, Football World Cup offers work really well. However, there's so much pent up frustration and anticipation that, you know, unfortunately always ends in disappointment in this country, that means that it's almost a stressful time. I mean, psychologists have studied this and have said that people are more stressed during the Football World Cup than uh, any, uh, you know, other times of the year. It's almost too much um, anticipation. There's too much hope that then turns into sadness. So there's something that goes on, a national mood, which is, it's happy and it's upbeat, but it, it's kind of strained, uh, and we're a bit on edge, and then we all get sad when we lose. It's a bit like Wimbledon with Andy Murray. You know, everybody goes, oh, great, he's going to win, and everyone gets happy, and there is an upbeat mood, but then he loses, and then we're reminded how bad we are um, at sport, uh, and we all get depressed. The Olympics doesn't do this to this country. Um, I don't know why, but we've kind of accepted that we're not very good at the Olympic sports. And we know that you know the stated aim for the Team GB is to be fourth in the medals. Now in the Football World Cup, we never say, oh, I'd, I'd like us to finish fourth. Um, anyway, you, you, you get what I'm saying. You know, we're in the football, we, we want to win. And we never do since 1966. Um, but, but you know, you can see what I mean. We, we wouldn't say, oh, we'll get to the semi-finals. You know, that would not be a stated aim. The same with Andy Murray. We don't say, well, it would be great if he just made the final. We say he's got to win it. Uh, you know, we had the drama with Andy Murray, but we had it with uh, Tim Henman before that. And it's just, you know, we have this anticipation. We don't have that with the Olympics. We're okay with finishing fourth in the medal table. We just don't really mind. We, we're not looking for gold so much. There might be a few events like Chris Hall or whatever in the cycling uh, you know and uh, people like that but basically we just we just want to enjoy the olympics and we want to enjoy the the sporting extravaganza and the spectacle and actually that gives us a really upbeat positive mood throughout the games there's no big disappointment because we know we're not going to win the medal tables we all get so excited about the 100 meters and we want to see who's going to win and are they going to break the record we know that you know it's highly unlikely there'll be a British athlete um, in the 100 metre final, and if they will, they'll be in lane eight and they'll, they'll lose by a second. You know, it's just it's just not going to happen. So we're just happy and we enjoy the games. So actually, Olympic offers will work even better than, as I say, a World Cup or a Wimbledon offer. I'm not saying don't run World Cup or Wimbledon offers. They work well, you know, do it. But just remember the Olympics. I don't know a better time of year to run the Olympics. It, it works so well. As I say, everyone's happy. We're all upbeat. It's summertime and, you know, we hope it's going to be good weather and it's such a good time to tap into it and it only comes around every four years. So really get involved with this. Create some Olympic offers. I've given you more details in that InFocus article. If you're struggling to find an Olympic offer for your business, drop me a line and I'll find you at least 10 for your business. I can't imagine a business that can't have at least 10 Olympic offers. Um, I'm not saying run 10 offers. I'm just saying I'll give you 10 ideas. Pick the one you like. But please, what I'm saying is the country's in a great upbeat mood. We don't mind if we lose in the Olympics. We just want to enjoy all the sports. Uh, we get excited about it, tap into that national mood. The media will be full of Olympic stories this coming Olympics. Friday night is an opening ceremony. You receive this video on Saturday, so the Olympics is just kicking off. And the media will be crazy, the country will be crazy. It also happens at a time of year when nothing else happens. Parliament's in recess, um, there's no major business news because business leaders go on holiday. Um, you know, health tends to be okay during the summer. You know, other than a, a, a natural disaster or something, there's not going to be very much in the news. So you've got an amazing opportunity to capitalise on this. As I say, if you're struggling, I'll give you some more ideas. But please get involved with the Olympics and get involved in some offers and use it as a great opportunity opportunity in your business. So that brings us to the end of today's recording. I hope this has been useful. I hope that you can you can look at emails, you can start to build your list as we've mentioned, you can use some Olympic offers and you can download the template we've given you and just, just get on with doing it. So as I say, I hope it's been useful. Um, I've really enjoyed putting together the templates for this and doing this recording because I, I really believe in email marketing. I believe anyone can use that template I've given you in 10 minutes. And also, as you can probably see, I'm really passionate about Olympic offers because it's a brilliant opportunity you only get every four years. So please, please capitalize on it. You've got no excuses. 
I've shown you how um, you can send emails. It doesn't have to be emails, by the way, as well. You could use your Olympic offers for direct mail or advertising. You know how to do that. I've given you the templates to use, and I've also said to you, if you're struggling for ideas, I'll give you ideas. So I've removed any excuse not to make the Olympics a fantastic time, not just in your personal life, but in your business life, and capitalise on this theme. So you'll hear from me in a week's time. So between now and then, have a fantastic time in business. Take care, and I'll speak to you soon. Goodbye.